my name is Sena. I'm a molecular biology and genetics student in Turkey. Today, I'm going to talk about the relevance of water activity in genetic mechanisms of fungal adaptation to space conditions. There are many researchers on making space more livable for humans, and fungi play a play an important role in the in this due to their adaptability, producing food, oxygen, and recycling waste. Fungi are one of the most resilient organisms on Earth, and they have adapted to survive in some of the most extreme environments, including space. In my project, um, I searched for the articles that mentioned on the genetic mechanisms of fungal adaptations to water activity. Collecting this information will help us understand how fungi behave in conditions such as low water activity. This will allow, uh, allow us to plan safer and more sustainable missions. These are the conditions that all my team searched. I will focus on the water activity. So, what is this fungi we're talking about? Fungi are a diverse group of organisms. They are extremely adaptable and they have a remarkable tendency to explore new environments. They can use new resources, make new connections, and use their existing skills and abilities to adapt to new environments. They can survive in, wide, in extreme conditions and thrive in a wide range of environments, from deepest oceans to the harshest deserts, thanks to their adaptable nature. Also, they are very important for human life and essential for the environment. They are decomposers. That means they break down organic nutrition, organic matter and recycle the nutrition into the soil. They form symbiotic relationship with plants and animals. In addition to this, they can be beneficial to humans by producing food, beverages and medicine. For example, they are used to make penicillin and other antibiotics with, which are essential for treating infections. We talk about fungi, we talk about that fungi can survive in extreme conditions, but how does it do that? Firstly, when fungi exposed to the high levels of radiation in space, it can produce melanin to absorb radiation. Melanin is a dark pigment and helps preventing the damage caused by uh, radiation on fungus's DNA. Interesting, isn't it? Fungi can survive in extreme temperatures, both hot and cold. They produce special enzymes that are active in high or low temperatures. By producing these enzymes, essential metabolic processes uh, can carry out even in extreme temperatures. Fungi produce some uh, spatial adaptations to a vacuum of space, which allows them to prevent the cells from collapsing to survive. Producing enzymes that help uh, repair damage to the cell membrane can be given as an example. Lastly, Fungi can survive in the environments that has low water activity by producing some spatial proteins. These pro proteins help it to retain water, and that is the main topic of my presentation. Water activity is a measure of the amount of free water available in a system. Low water activity environments has low water content and high solute content. This means that there are, there are fewer water molecules available to interact with the solids, which can make it difficult to micro, difficult for microorganisms to grow. Fungi are organisms that are survive in low uh, water activity environments. They have adaptations that allow them to tolerate dehydration, such as uh, compatible solutes three halos, and modified cell membranes. These adaptations play an important role in the ecology and the importance of fungi to humans. They can even survive in environments that has water activity as low as 0.6. There are a few modifications that I'm going to mention. Production of compatible solutes. 
Compatible solutes are organic molecules that can protect cells from dehydration. They do this by binding the water molecules and prevent preventing them from leaving the cell. Common compatible solutes produced by fungi include glycerol, mannitol, and three halos. Accumulation of three halos. Three halos is a disaccharide that is particularly well suited for protecting cells from dehydration. It is found in many fungi and its accumulation is often associated with osmo tolerance. Modification of cell membranes. Fungal cell membranes can be modified uh, to make them more resistant to the dehydration. This is done by increasing the amount of fatty acids in the membrane. Production of extracellular polymers. Extracellular polymers can help to protect fungal, fungal cells from dehydration by forming a barrier around the cell. These polymers are often made of sugars or proteins. And these are the other uh, adaptations that I found in the articles. In conclusion, uh, astro astromycology is a rapidly growing field of research with the potential to revolutionize space exploration. However, more research is needed to ensure the safety of space missions and the effective use of fungi in space. I would like to thank Blue Marble Space Institute for giving me this opportunity and my supervisors and team members for everything. And thanks for listening. I'm sorry that I was, uh, and I, I was, uh, uh, if there's a disconnection due to the weather or if I just messed up because I'm a little bit excited. I would like to- well, You did a great job. That was wonderful. Thank you. And your presentation worked very well. So every now and then, like the fates smile upon us and they allow, they allow us to get through the presentation, even when things are forcing us to disconnect regularly. Um, I'm very glad it worked out. Uh, Sanjoy has his hand up for the first question. Senna, please don't apologize. You did a very nice presentation, very understandable. I uh, really enjoyed Thank it. Um, my, my question has to do, I find it extraordinary that fungi can adapt to water activity as low as 0.6. Because that's also yeah. roughly the water activity limit of single cellular, you know, bacteria and archaea. And you mentioned that tray halos was what those fungi are generating to make this adaptation possible. Is tree halos also found in bacteria and archaeal cells as their way to adapt to low water activity? I'm not very sure about that. I haven't checked it very much in the bacteria or archaea. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I, I've never heard of it, so I'm excited to learn more. Thank you. I would like to check and learn it, uh, too. Uh, thanks for asking this question. I see Ben Pauly has a hand up. Go ahead, Ben. Hello. Yeah, this is a great presentation. Something I'm kind of curious about is, so you go through all these adaptations that uh, would let the fungi like survive in these extreme environments. And so just sort of a clarification on what it means to survive is it mean are they like actively living and growing or do they just have the ability to like hibernate or be dormant uh, when they're in like these extreme environments? Uh, they can uh, like uh, live and produce, uh, they can continue living and uh, producing their, uh, how can I say it? Uh, uh, for most of the conditions, uh, they can actively uh, live and uh, continue to their um, cell activity. <laughs> uh, but sometimes uh, I'm not very sure about it. And uh, maybe they, if there's a really extreme conditions, I am not sure, but maybe they can. Uh, just continue living and uh, not uh, very productive or effective. 
Thanks for asking the question.